Hey everyone, so I've come to the conclusion that 64 gigabytes of RAM is not enough for the main database server for Let's Play Index. It's the biggest problem a site has at this point in time because it slows down every single task that needs to be done to function. As a general rule, the entire data set for a database has to fit into memory. This allows every single query to read everything from memory and all of the disk operations will be writes. When you reach the memory limit, anything not in memory will be read from disk. Whether it's from a rotating hard drive or a solid state drive, reading from disk will always be slower than memory. And to make things worse, those read operations take away from the performance of write operations. That's exactly what's happening with Let's Play Index at this point in time. The data set is around 97 gigabytes, the processor is struggling to get the work done, and as it continues to grow, the performance will continue to get worse and worse. This server runs an Intel Xeon E3-1240 V6 processor, 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and an LSI-9266 8i RAID controller with a 1 gigabyte write cache with a battery backup unit, controlling 8 Western Digital Gold 1 terabyte hard drives. The biggest limitation is the RAM. I cannot upgrade it further on this system. I've done a couple of things to address this problem already. I moved the metadata onto its own server, and that alleviated a lot of the problems with performance. And I have a copy of it in a small Elasticsearch cluster so I can do really quick searches against the data. Unfortunately, the dataset continues to grow, and there's only so much I can do until I just have to migrate to another server that supports more memory. So here we are with the new server. It has two Intel Xeon E5-2690 V3 12-core processors, 256 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and an LSI-9361 8i RAID controller with a 1 gigabyte write cache and a cache vault module to protect the data in flight in the event of a power loss. I chose this server mainly for its 256 gigabytes of RAM. It's more than enough to hold our current dataset and has plenty of room to grow in the future. For the hard drives, I'll be using the ones in the existing server. I chose these Western Digital Gold hard drives because of their rugged design. They're built specifically for the heavy workloads in databases and other use cases within a data center environment. Even though this supports 12 drives, I decided not to buy any more and just use the 8 of them that I already have. I did add one addition though. I'm using this Kingston 120GB SSD to hold the operating system. Consumer SSDs are missing some of the key features of enterprise SSDs, such as extra spare blocks and power loss protection. Since this SSD will be connected to the RAID controller, and it's not expected to have many writes to disk, I think this should be okay. I'll be installing the software off camera, and then once I install the server in the data center, I'll show you how I get the site back up and running again. Okay, now the server is now in the server rack, and we've installed CentOS 8 and MariaDB 10.4, and as you can see, the server is doing absolutely nothing. Sitting at zero CPU usage. Nothing's really running other than MySQL, but it's just doing nothing. Anyway, there's all the CPU cores. We need to make this do something. The first thing we're going to do is run sudo mysql secure installation and this is basically just a script that hardens the MariaDB server. It's called mysql because MariaDB is a fork of mysql and it's intended as a drop-in replacement so all of the commands are the same. So here we go, the first thing we're going to do is set a password for root. Since this is a fresh install, it doesn't have a password yet. What is this? No. Yes, I do. So I'll just change it right now. The password is hunter2, by the way. No, it's not. Okay, so we're removing anonymous accounts so that no one can mess with it with an anonymous account. And you want to disable root login remotely, so you can only access it from localhost. Remove all the test databases and test data. And reload the privileges. And that's basically it, we've just hardened our database. Now it's suitable for production. 
Now another thing we need to do is create the Let's Play Index database. So we'll just get in here. Okay, create database. Let's Play Index. Next, we will grant it privileges. Except it's only one privilege. And of course I'm hiding this because remember this is a secure uh this is supposed to be a secure server in a production environment so obviously I can't show you everything but I'll try to show as much as I can. Then we'll flush the privileges. Now this is in effect. The next thing we need to do is restore the database from our backup. So in order to do that I need to look up the command because I forgot how to do it. Hang on. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. And there we go. It is now restoring all of the data from the previous server onto this new server. And this is going to take a very long time. So I'll just skip ahead until it's done. Okay, we're finally done and it's up and running. It took two days to restore the backup, but it's done. It's actually been running for a few days now, doing everything it's supposed to be doing. The most important thing to note here is the memory. The server is using around 125 gigabytes, almost all of which is being used by MariaDB to cache the data in memory. This means every read from the database is from memory, and all of the disk I.O. is almost exclusively writes. While some of the CPU caches are at 100%, most of them are idle, as you can see here. Or maybe not. I can't actually show you every single CPU because there's no room here. But anyway, I'm already placing it under a far heavier load than the previous server. I'm doing more frequent calculations of the data and I'm adding videos at a faster rate. And yet the server is still very responsive. This wasn't the case before and that also means I can increase the workload on the server in the future provided that the rest of the system can handle it. All of the data is being written to 8 hard drives in the RAID 10, so I have 4 hard drives worth of write performance with the other 4 holding a copy of the same data for redundancy. If a hard drive fails, I can just replace the hard drive with one of my spares, all without turning off anything. At this point in time, the system is writing around 136 megabytes per second to the RAID, which is roughly 35-ish megabytes per second per hard drive. The specs on the WD Gold 1TB hard drives list the maximum sustained write performance as 184 megabytes per second, so there's plenty of room to grow, especially now that the data no longer has to be read from disk. This server has accomplished its goal, and it only set me back around $3,000 Canadian. And there's still more work to be done and more servers to be added, and some of these servers need to be reconfigured, especially the old database server which I can now change to do something else. Please keep in mind that both Let's Play Index and Esports Earnings are self-sustaining. I do not take donations through PayPal or Patreon. The revenue generated from these websites are reinvested back into the websites, and that includes the operating expenses and the acquisition of servers like the one in this video. If you want to support these projects, check out letsplayindex.com and esportsearnings.com. Share these websites and this video with others. Like, comment, and subscribe because I'll be making more videos on the development of these projects. I don't need your money. I just need your help to spread the word. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.